Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this vintage armor tech early production German Tiger 1. Since the last video update, a lot of progress has been made to the tank's upper deck in which all of the detailing has been added. We'll be going over these additions as well as modifications in this video. Starting with the tool post, probably one of the most important and iconic features that are found on the top deck detailing is that for the tow cable storage. For the main tow cable clamps on the Tiger 1 it is facilitated by a few different fittings. The center fittings which are these parts here are particularly important as they not only hold and secure on the, tr the tow cable but also hold on the gun cleaning safes which would be stowed in these three little sections here. Now the clamp which is found with the stock armor tech kit is the component that you see here. It is comprised out of two pieces. You have a white metal casted bracket along with a laser cut steel strap. Now the components that you see here are basically in similar concept with the current generations one only of course difference being that of the media rather than being casted white metal the new versions are made of CNC. Now this version here is not terrible in fact I would normally have used it the only piece I would have changed up would be that of the strap for the simple fact that the shape if we notice on the ends here are rounded however on the real Tiger one they are just simple flat squared edges. Now the reason why I'm not going to be utilizing this component on the tank as simply put I only have three of these brackets instead of four. The fourth one is missing and I wasn't able to track it out in the parts that I have so rather than trying to fabricate a new one or even trying to make a mold of this one I simply just replace the entire set with the components that you see here. The set that you see here is straight off of the EastCoastArmory.com product line. They are comprised of resin as well as brass straps and components. Starting with the tow cable and stave bracket, the ECA one is very similar in design to the ArmorTech one. However, it is slightly larger in spec. Now, because of the larger size of the ECA one, I can't just utilize this set with the ArmorTech ones as the larger size will throw it off. So I'll just simply replace the Armor Tech one altogether with the ECA ones. Moving from the stave mounts takes us to the main tow cable locks. The locks themselves again are made out of resin and have a hinged brass plate. Now all of these pieces will be bolted together with that of fasteners and these fasteners will be added once the pieces are mounted to the tank. Now all the holes that are drilled into the resin here are actually tapped which will make the assembly of the pieces a lot easier as you don't have to worry about fasteners falling into the tank specifically when everything is buttoned up and when you're in final assembly trying to put the cables on. Moving on from the tow cable clamp takes us to the rear tow cable clamps. These are located on the rear fan guards and are on the real tank have a little wing nut that would pivot out of the way and then this piece here would also pivot thus securing or allowing access for the cable. These sets have been used on several of my builds and are basically a staple on all of my Tiger 1's. Another important detailing that's found on the top deck of the Tiger 1 is that of the headlights. Now this being an early production Tiger, the vehicle utilizes two headlights which are found on both corners of the top deck. This of course differs from the later production Tigers which only have a single headlight mounted in the front of the Glash's plate. As for the actual headlights themselves, just like with the remainder of the detail parts, they are made with the same exact type of tooling, that being white metal cast alloy made from a very old 3D printed master. As you can see from the detailing, it is very basic in both its shape as well as its strap detailing. Now one thing that's nice about these headlights is that they are hollow, so making them light is, is a relatively easy job to do. To fill in the back, we have here a laser cut steel disc, which simply gets placed onto the rear portion of the light. Now, rather than going ahead and utilizing these components here, the kit will be re receiving the components that we have here. 
As for the aftermarket parts that you see here, these were supplied by the owner of the build who acquired them from an aftermarket source years ago before he was getting ready to start the build. As for the actual maker, I believe these pieces are from Steve Winston. And the reason why I say this is because I've seen many of these headlights before. These headlights are exquisitely detailed. They are all comprised out of casted bronze alloy, which are more than likely done with investment castings. They are pre-wired and have bulbs on the inside. As you can see, the Bosch logo is present on the casting as well as all the fine little rivet detailing that we have. Now what's unique about these lights is that you pop them open and you have access to the lens which is molded in clear plastic and you can see has very nice detailing present. These lights here are extremely recommended. Now What's important and interesting to point out is that in the past, these lights here would have to be inquired aftermarket, just like the way you see it here on this table. However, since this generation of Armor Tech kits, Armor Tech went ahead and, as we all know, redesigned their kits frequently. However, rather than trying to tool up their own headlight, the Armor Tech kits these days literally come with the same headlights detailing that we see here. So, acquiring these headlights for anyone that has a more recent rendition of the Armored Tech Tiger, or Panther or King Tiger for that matter, is literally not necessary. Not just the lenses and the headlights themselves, which are nicely done, are included with the set, but the set also contains the following details that we have here on the table. Here we have the armored covers, which are the second pattern, which have this angular shape to them. The earlier ones were more of a drum profile, however these are just as accurate to use on, the, on this version of the Tiger One. Now one thing that is, that, that is supplied with this set that I have not seen with the more recent renditions is that of the cabling detail that we have here. As you can see, it also comes with a pre-bent rod that is shaped, and this rod here is to mimic the power conduit which emerges from the side here of the headlight and runs into the hull. In addition to the pre-bent wiring, they also come with little clamps which are used to fasten the, the conduit to the top deck. From what I've seen on the more recent renditions, and as well as from ordering from Steve Direct, I don't believe these are supplied with the headlights anymore. However, I might possibly be mistaken, but I do know that with the one supplied with the Armor Tech kit, I have not seen these details supplied. Some of the other hull fittings which also need to be added to the tank at this point is that of the fire extinguisher, the jack block, as well as the antenna antenna base. These components that you see here are the original kit supplied ones. Starting with the antenna and the antenna base, as for the base, it is basically just a nylon machined plug that is threaded which you bolt to the inside of the vehicle. As for the antenna, that is facilitated with this component that I have here, which is a long brass rod, which is covered and concealed inside of a large long shrink tubing sheath. On the end there is a fastener, and the idea for this is that you actually slip it into the faux antenna base to which then with an eyelet you go ahead and thread this to the tank's external antenna. Keep in mind when these tanks were developed the 2 gigahertz radios were not nearly as prolific as they are today and they were using a standard radio to which you need to extend the radio outside the model. As for the jack block, the block itself is a piece of what looks to be formica it is a solid block of the material and overall is actually not too bad and can be worked with. The strap detail is literally just a bent laser cut steel strap. Simply fits over the piece like so and it's held on the deck with two fasteners. As for the fire extinguisher that is facilitated with this piece here. It is your typical white metal casting with very basic detailing indeed. 
and it is a hefty unit. Now, rather than utilizing the parts that you see here, they will be replaced with the aftermarket components that I have right here. Just like with the other parts that I mentioned, all of these components that you see here were supplied by the owner of the tank, which he again acquired many years ago. All of these components that you see here are from six scale icons, which as like I mentioned in the grill work video, was a company making very high end, beautifully made detail upgrades for German tanks in one six scale. However, a number of years ago, the owner did pass away regrettably, to which then the company was then, and all the assets were sold off to Field of Armor. Field of Armor does have all these components. However, as for pricing and availability information, that would be best by contacting him through the email address listed below, or also stopping by the website with the URL, again, listed below and in the video listing. As for the original six scale icon parts, they are marvelous. Uh, they are extremely nicely done. Starting with the fire extinguisher, compared to the original stock armor tech piece, the detailing is quite evident. The six scale icons unit is made out of a hollow aluminum tube, which is pre-assembled and the part literally came like this out of the part bag, which I have on top of my table. The piece is comprised out of really two components, you have the main body and fire extinguisher, as well as the end cap, which is a white metal cast piece. As for the fire extinguisher, it is actually removable and is the mount itself is functional. Starting with first this little hinge plate, let me get this in focus, there we go. It pivots out of the way. These straps are made out of photo etch brass. and the piece lifts directly off. Little handles are also made of photo etch. And everything you see here came pre-done. There was no assembly of any sort required on the components that you see in this video here. Moving from the fire extinguisher, takes me to the jack block. As you can see, the six scale icons one uses a block of wood as opposed to four mica. And he also goes ahead and adds the strengthening strap with, if you notice, all of the rivet detailing which is present, as well as the little lift handle. In addition to that, his strapping system is that of a prototypical design, which is what you would see on the Tiger One, which consists of a hinged bracket, as well as little corner pieces which help secure the block and orientate it on top of the deck of the tank. As you can see, it's still mint in the packaging and has been sealed up since probably about 2005 or so. Comparing it with the four mica block, the quality should come right through the camera. Moving from the block takes us to the antenna and the antenna base. Starting with the base, the six scale icons set here really is on top of the food chain when it came to the industry. It is comprised out of a real flexible rubber mount, as well as a brass tube. It's all fabricated out of metals, and the piece is fully flexible, which is a beautifully done part from six scale icons. You Note know, the original packaging. As for the antenna, just like the antenna base, it is highly nicely done and is very nicely machined. It is all brass fabrication. You can see the little clamp detailing with a little miniature functional wing nut. Now the piece is a little banged up and bent from years of clunking around the parts box. However, this is all gonna be straightened out once ready for installation. And of course, some another very important bit of detailing needs to be added is that of the bow hatches. The bow hatches that were supplied with the Armortech kit are in this bag or envelope over here. And this is the original envelope that they were then shipped in. And there go the parts. The Armortech hatches were comprised of three pieces. You have the actual hatch itself, the pivoting hinge, 
as well as a, another hinge component which would have been found in one of the other part bags. As for the pieces, like you clearly can see, it's made of the same white metal cast alloy which has been seen before. They are pretty hefty in size. As for interior detailing, it's very basic. You have the basic outline of the lug and lock mechanism. No periscope detailing added and it has a built-in hinge. Externally, the hatches are not bad. You have the basic hatch itself with a molded in integral periscope guard. Now, rather than using the kit hatches, I went ahead and in their place we'll be adding a set of aftermarket hatches from again six scale icons. Like what was mentioned with the other parts, these were another bit of detailing which were supplied by the builder. Now, before I go into the six scale icons parts, it's important to point out that these hatches here are also no longer in production and no longer supplied with the Armor Tech kits. In their place, I believe that the hatches are white metal castings from the aftermarket company Armor Packs, which is another very high end aftermarket company and I've used several of their components on many of other of my builds that are found on the video listings as well as posted on eastcoastarmory.com and their pieces are definitely a lot more advanced compared to these basic ones that were found on these first generation kits. As for the six scale icons hatch they again are really stellar and just showed you just how much quality were in their parts during their heyday. They came packaged in, this, in a box like you see here. This is all original. Opening up the box has some bubble wrap and you can see the components. With everything out of the box, you can see that all the components are also made in a casted white metal alloy. However, unlike the ArmorTech originals, these ones here have a much smoother finish in comparison. They have their hinges mounted on in the similar format which is found on the real Tiger One with that of small countersunk fasteners. Now if we notice here on the model they are done with small Phillips screws which on the real Tiger One they wouldn't have any sort of tool head equipment that would be found they would just be flush. That aside you can see the interior detailing. You can see the locking mechanism which is full function. All of the brass is done with photo etch brass and these pieces came again pre-built like you see here. Even if we notice on the hinge mechanism it has its stop lock as the small little fasteners and you can even see the little retaining washers which still need to be orientated and bent down by the builder namely which will be myself. Same thing also is found on the opposite hinge or opposite hatch for that matter. Going on to the hinges which are miniature works of art. The hinges again are all made out of white metal. They have their little hatch retaining latch function and the pieces if I can get into frame you can see are actually really spring bound with miniature springs. Very impressive bit of engineering. As for the the other rest of the detailing you can see that the pieces also have their counter opening springs found with the detailing. Now the springs that you see here are not actual real springs. These appear to be that made of coils of solder which were spooled to give the illusion that they are actually really springs. However the detailing is again top notch all the way around. Moving on from the hinges takes us to the a little bag that has the remainder of the detailing. The bag open I could reveal the contents. We have two lengths of small black rubber tubing. This detailing here is going to be that of the actual rubber gasket which is found on this portion here of the hatch. I mean again just top notch all the way. The periscope guards which are molded in the same nice white metal. Another bit of detailing that was supplied with the kit that will be added is that of 
the periscope inserts. The periscope inserts are probably even just as nice in quality as the hatches, but probably more than likely a lot better. First we have the little protectors for the portions that are on the inside of the tank. They are actually molded and casted in a rubber. And here are the pieces. I mean, talk about beautifully made. This is the poster child of that. You can see that they have their little springs. Get this into focus, there we go. You see the little pivoting springs which are found on the part that swings open. The reason why they have these springs is that in case you break a prism, either get shot out or damaged in combat, you can swing this out of the way, remove the prism and replace it. A similar feature is also found on American AFV. On the German versions, they are held on with little wing nuts. Which if you could bear with me here. These are very stiff. They've been in this position for a long time. And they swing out of the way. The six scale icon German AFV periscopes were the best ones offered on the aftermarket seen in for one six scale AFV. And here goes the hatch now fully assembled, painted and is ready for installation. The other hatch has also been painted and weathered and currently has been mounted to the top deck of the tank. As for the hatch itself, like I said in the unboxing portion, the hatches are almost near perfection. The, they were built strictly out of the box and have been painted with their weathering. Then after the weathering was added, the rubber gasket, which was kit supplied, was mounted. As for mounting them to the tank, this will be facilitated by three little fasteners, which will be mounted to three, these three locations that we have here. Now, as for actually mounting them to the top deck, this is where a, a mod was needed. If we notice on the top deck, a small little ring was mounted on top of the top deck plate. This is as per the real vehicle. The real Tiger one has a ring that stands off the hatch from the top deck. Top, the hatches do not just sit flush with the deck and have this little ring that we have here. As for the rings themselves, they are absent from the kit and they are fabricated out of turned PVC. Now, this was also done to the other side and it's a complete mirror image. Now, one thing important to point out that on the more recent renditions of the Armor Tech Tiger 1, these rings are supplied with the kit and are comprised out of two CNC aluminum rings. In addition to the ring, you'll notice I went ahead and drilled out the locations for that of the fastener location holes. Now, because of the standoff of the extra ring, I went ahead and made a spacer plate out of Lexan, which stands off the hinge from the top deck in order for the piece to fit more appropriately. If that standoff wasn't there, the hinge would, would have difficulty with the mounting and the hatch will not sit flush with the piece. As for the locations for the fasteners, they need to have been drilled out as they differ from the kit's versions. If we notice the kit ones, the kit locations for the mounting of the hatch hinge have been thoroughly deleted along with many of the other tool locations that were originally supplied with the kit. They were all deleted and polished away via bodywork. As for the Hinge fasteners, you'll notice I went ahead and added them as countersunks. This is as per the real vehicle, and as I often mention on these Tiger One builds, the Tiger One's real hatch was similar with the installation as you see here, and these three locations are present on the real Tiger One tank. Now, for the kit, I'll be utilizing these Allen countersunk screws. If I can get into focus. These screws here will be utilized, however, if we notice there's a small little hole for that of the tool mark. Once everything is mounted in place and is thoroughly locked down, I will go ahead and delete the tool locations with that of the bodywork. This will be done to not only the top deck, but also to the top portion of the hatch itself. As we notice, we still have the Phillips heads, which are present.
being an early production Tiger One, the vehicle does feature the top deck mounted S mine grenade launchers. The purpose of these devices are exactly what you think they are for. On the real Tiger One, one of the lessons learned from the Russian front was that the vehicles are actually very vulnerable to mass attacks by infantry in which they can crawl on top of the tank and throw grenades or Molotov cocktails into the engine compartment which will destroy the tank. One way to combat this, the German design, was with this setup that we have here. The setup consists of several of these canisters which are mounted on the top deck and they would be loaded with a standard S-mine type grenade. The grenade would be triggered from the interior portion of the vehicle via an electrical control. Now the Armortech tank does feature these components and here are two examples of the ones that come with the tank. Just like with the other parts mentioned, they are made with the same white metal casted alloy that have been seen on the other parts that I have already mentioned. These pieces here will not be utilized on this build as the detailing on them is very basic. In their place, I went ahead and tooled up a new set of resin S-mines. Now, for many years, I've had the S-mine set listed on the EastCoastArmory.com product line. However, the versions that are on that were previously posted on the website have become a little bit dated. More specifically, since I created those parts, I learned a lot more on how the S-mines actually worked, as well as a lot more of the intricate detailing found on them. So rather than go ahead and use the older set, I went ahead and retooled the entire set to the components that you see here. These sets here are all new tooling and are no way in, are they compatible with the first generation ones that are found on ECA. The ECA sets contain five of these canisters. The canisters that you see here are all made out of resin and comprise of a few different components. First, you'll notice that the tube itself is hollow in the back, as opposed to the Armortech one, which is solid. And there is a bar that runs across with a hole found in the center. If we notice on the top, there is a clip that is riveted to the tube. The purpose of this clip is to hold the S-mine once loaded inside of the, the canister and prevents it from sliding out. On the base, you'll notice that the base has a arrowhead shape to it. This is also as per my reference material. And it gets fixed to the top deck with that of four fasteners, of which I'll be going over shortly. You'll also notice another small little hole in the front, as well as three holes and a bracket found on the sides. Now, the purpose of this is for the little electrodes, which are used to actually have the component fire electrically. The little electrodes are on this little casting runner here which is still left in the raw. These pieces here will be removed off of the runner and added to the S-Mine launcher after they're attached to the hull which will follow shortly after this clip. Now this external grenade launching setup is purely an early production feature. By the time the mid and late production tanks came out this system was phased out and was no longer present. In their place rather than having the numerous grenades mounted on the side of the tank, the Germans went ahead and developed a reloadable mortar system which was found and built inside of the tank's turret. This is present on the later versions of the Tiger as well as on the second and third generation German tanks, namely that of the Panther as well as the King Tiger. The advantage that that setup has over the older setup is that with the older style setup, you do have a little bit more coverage of on the vehicle as you have five of these canisters mounted on the hull. However, they are a one-shot only system. They cannot be fired numerous times as you actually have to reload them while outside of the tank. With the mortar setup, the crew member is safe in, inside the tank's armor and he can reload the grenade launcher as long as he has ammunition for the grenades found on the inside. Also, the grenade launcher can pivot 360 degrees, which does alleviate the arc problem by having one system as opposed to numerous. And another feature that the mortar setup has is that they also remove the external smoke grenades, which are typically found on the turrets of the earlier German tanks. With the smoke grenade, you could, just like with the S-Mine, you have a canister which you just load inside the mortar and launch it. And it gives you the same 
benefits as what I mentioned before with that of the S-Mine. And here's the top deck with the last of the welds now added. The welds have been added to not only the seams in which would be found on the real tank, but are also found on all of the tool posts that have been mounted to the top deck. As for the welds, they are done in my usual format with that of sculpted epoxy. First thing to point out is just like on all the other Tiger One builds that I build, the top deck has its center weld bead in addition to the ones found around the edges. The reason for this is that on the German Tiger One, the top deck was not one continuous plate. In fact, it was made from a mosaic of pieces. For the main hull section from the fighting compartment, it was comprised out of two plates that were mirror images of each other that would be welded together in a jig. These welds are found on the model and should be found on all Tiger One variants. And here we can see all the tool posts now mounted to the tank. The tool posts are mounted in a way which is that of an early production Tiger. The tool posts differed slightly with the later production units. Where this is key is with this device over here. The purpose of this clamp is to hold down and secure a rectangular steel plate. What this steel plate is this is the cutoff for the air intake which is found on the engine deck. When the tank was originally developed, as we all know, it was originally designed to snorkel. Well, when the tank would snorkel, you would go ahead and remove the air intake which was found on the engine deck, or in this case with an early production unit, the Fifel Y air intake. Obviously, this is not going to be very watertight and water could go into the engine compartment which can cause problems very quickly. The Tiger was designed that when you would prep the tank for snorkeling operation, you would remove these fasteners here, remove the FIFO Y, and then bolt on this rectangular plate. The rectangular plate would go ahead and go in this section here and seal off the engine compartment from the water pressure. Now, once the tank was done with the forwarding, as soon as the crew had a chance, they would go ahead, remove this steel plate, and reinsert the FIFO Y. When the piece was not being used, it was stowed in this section over here. Now, this bit of detailing here is not part of the Armor Tech kit, nor was it supplied from the Six Scout Icons detail sets. It is all fabricated by myself. As for the materials, I used a steel strip for that of the actual clamp, and for the mechanism itself, it's all comprised out of plastruct sheet strips of plastic. The fasteners you see here are mounted directly to the top deck so they shouldn't fall off during the construction and should stay permanently in place. Another bit of detailing that was added to the model is that of the antenna storage tube. The purpose of this device is exactly what the name implies and it's to store the antenna when not in use. The antenna base would stay mounted on top of the top deck and then you would pop off a cap and slide the entire antenna in this location and it keeps it safe from the elements. As for the detail itself, this was not part of the Armor Tech kit, nor was it supplied from Six Scale Icons, and the components totally scratch built. For the materials used, for the main body, it's that of a brass tube. Steel strips were bent and soldered into place. As for the two end caps, these are turned out of resin. Now, the entire tube is then bolted directly to the side plate of the vehicle. It is not mounted to the top deck. Mounting the tube on the side is actually very beneficial, not only for detail-wise, as it is found in this location on the real tanks, but for this RC tank, it's also very handy in that due to the way the deck has to come off the tank, by having the tube stowed on the side over here, it prevents it from getting damaged from trying to maneuver this heavy plate and fitting everything in place. With this view here, you get a good look at the way the S-Mines are mounted on the tank's hull. The early production Tiger One used five S-Mines total. Two would be mounted in the front, one is mounted in the rear middle portion of the hull, and the last two would be mounted on the corner tips of the rear. 
Currently, the top deck versions have been mounted. However, the ones on the rear are still being finished off and they will be added by the next video update. As for the S mines, one thing that's very interesting about the early production Tiger 1 is that there are two mounted in the front which face forward towards the corner. There's the two in the back which face outward. And then there's the one in the middle that faces directly straight towards the left hand side of the tank. But for some reason there was never one fitted on the reverse side. Which is very interesting the fact that the Germans purposely left this area exposed without any sort of protection from the S-Mine. Of course this would all change with the mid-production units when they went with the swiveling S-Mine slash smoke grenade launcher that was fitted to the later versions of the German tanks. Moving our way to the tank's headlights, the headlights have been mounted to the model and are fully functional. The components you see here are the ones that I shown in the previous scene. Only here you can see them now fully assembled. Here we have the conduit cap. We have the actual conduit, a conduit clamp, and the light itself. Now the headlight itself was not just simply bolted to the top deck. Rather, the headlight was bolted to a steel plate which was welded to the top deck. This detailing was installed on this model here. You can see the weld beads that are around the headlight. This is not making contact with the light itself, but is actually that of a styrene plastic sheet which, which simulates that of the boss or the mounting plate which would be found on the deck. The same type of procedure was also done to the S-Mines as well. The S-Mines had these two little straps in which the S-Mine would then bolt onto. Now the headlights are fully functional, however I had to change them from the original. When I was installing one of the headlights, I had an issue where I accidentally snapped the wire that was used for the bulb. With the wire snap, I had to replace the entire bulb with that of an LED. Now, since I had to convert one of the headlamps to LED, I might as well had to do that to the second one as well, just to keep it balanced. The LEDs in the long run are a lot better than the bulbs as they have better performance and better longevity. Everything has been patched into the tank's circuitry, and I'll go ahead and test the lights. First, I'll turn on the radio. And now I will turn on the tank's main power. With the tank on, I'll hit the switch, which should activate the light. Now the headlights are patched into the same circuitry, which was mentioned in the previous video about the light system. As a refresher, not only do the headlights turn on together, but the tank's rear tail light is also connected to the same circuit. Another detail component which was replaced from the kit original is that of the front blower. The original ArmorTech front blower is this unit that I have here. It is comprised of a single piece of CNC aluminum. This pattern of front blower is I believe still present on the subsequent versions of the ArmorTech release of the Tiger 1s. Now if we notice the, the kit one has a very flat top to it and is missing the little point that is present on these air blowers. Rather than trying to fabricate it, I simply replace it with my own resin ones that I have and use on my own builds. The unit was a simple drop-in installation and was a straight replacement from the ArmorTech kit original. After it was mounted, some welds were added, thus completing the component. Now, like I said before, pretty much all of the tools have been added to the tank with the exception of one. And right here on the front, nose of the vehicle on these earlier production tanks there would be that of a very large shovel. The shovel was not found in the parts box from six scale icons so this piece will have to be fabricated. This piece will be fabricated by the next video update as well. With these details now out of the way this is a huge step with getting this tank completed. With the smaller pieces that I mentioned that still need to be completed once added, the only thing that remains is that of working on the tank's turret, which will all be discussed in the next video update. And with that, that concludes this project update video for this vintage ArmorTech early production German Tiger 1. 
you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook, where there are more photographs of this build that have been posted since the project start. Also, don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more 1.6 and 1.16 scale builds and detail components. Thanks for watching.